Hello, hello, scientist. My name is Mr. Frills, and I am today I'll be teaching you here in room nine. Now, you should know that this is for second grade, but everybody who's willing to learn is, is welcome to stay and listen to what we have to learn and teach you today. I'm so glad you're here. So let's figure out what we can learn. Today's focus is um, a bit interesting. Um, today we're going to be scientists. We're going to be what? Scientists. Scientists use their senses to make sense of all the world around them. We use our nose to smell, our eyes to see, our mouth to taste sometimes, our ears to hear, our hands to touch, to make sense of the world around us. And what we also know is that scientists ask questions and then carry out an investigation to show what plants need to grow. Scientists measure and record data in an organized way so that it makes sense, so they can make sense of the observation and use this data to explain what they noticed. And we're going to do that today. Today, I have a question. Have you ever eaten a strawberry? If you have, which I feel like you have, you must have. I love strawberries. If you have, what was it like? Think about it. What was it like to eat a strawberry? What did it taste like? What did it feel like on the top of it? You may have noticed that strawberries have seeds. And you ever wonder, how do seeds become fruit? Do all seeds grow? And then why might some seeds grow and some seeds not grow as well? That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to spend some time setting up our investigation to see which seed grows and what it grows best in the conditions that we provide. Mr. Frills has a little allergy, so I'm going to wipe my eye a little bit. I'm not even sad. I promise you I'm not. Good to go. So let's think about it. Have you ever tried to plant a seed or just take care of a plant? You might know, you might have noticed that some don't grow all the same. Some grow bigger and stronger than others, and then some take a really long time to even leave, to even come out of the ground. And it's because certain plants might need certain things. Today we're gonna to do an experiment to test how different factors like light and water affect how seeds grow. I'm so excited. I love investigations, because like scientists, we don't know how it's gonna end up, and sometimes it's always very surprising, sometimes it's very surprising of what we come up with. So here's our, my question for you. What do you think plants need to grow? I'm gonna say that one more time. What do you think plants need to grow? Hmm. Let's see. We said water, we said light. What else would a plant need to grow? Let's think about it. What would a plant need to grow? Cool. So now that we've taken a moment to think about it, we've said plant, we said plant need water, plant needs light. I actually don't know that that's true. I don't know which one is gonna make it the strongest. So I'm gonna test it out to make my own investigation. Because I can't just go off what everybody else says. I gotta set up my own. So let's spend some time getting our materials together. I have a few things in front of me. The first are my things that I'm gonna use to pot, pot, to pot my plant. I have in this, we call it a little pot, and in this, I just use a little cup to keep it safe because they have a little hole at the bottom and I don't want everything to come out. And I'm gonna have my seeds. We're gonna grow marigold and we're gonna also grow dill. And I just wanna see how it turns out. But let's see, how can I set this up? Hmm. If I set this up, I probably should think about a few things. The first thing I wanna think about is like, what question am I trying to ask? I think I know the question I'm trying to ask. The question I'm trying to ask is, what do plants need to grow? Great, okay? And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to figure out all that I need for this. But first, I feel like I should make up hypothesis before I get started on the investigation. What do you think? 
Do you think that plants need both water and sun and light to grow? Or do you think they'll be fine with just one? Will it be fine with just water? Will it be fine with just light? Will it be fine with neither one? Hmm. Who knows? We'll see. My hypothesis, because I can make a hypothesis, my hypothesis is that if you water it, it'll be just fine. If you water it, it'll be just fine. The dill and the marigold will grow fine. They don't need light. That's my hypothesis. What's your hypothesis? Hmm, let's see. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to set it up before I make, I mean, now that I've made my hypothesis, to now get to learning what it is that we come up with. Did you know that scientists use experiments to figure out the questions that they have? To figure out the answers to the questions that they have? They use science and practices to explain an observation. Scientists also use tools to, to study what they observe. Without scientists doing experiments, we would not have gone to the moon, we would not have discovered medicines and developed computers. An experiment is a test of our prediction or our hypothesis. Let's put our, our prediction to the test. Mr. Frills has a few things in front of him. These cups, and I feel like I need eight of them. And I'm explaining to you why I think I need eight, because we want to set it up to be able to test all the conditions. And I'm going to walk you through each one that I've set up, that I'll set up for us today. The other thing I need is water. So I brought my water bottle, my spray bottle, and my water bottle. So we can fill it up just to where we need it, so we can put it in our pots. All filled up there, ready to go. The other thing I need, obviously if I'm planting something, what do you think I'm missing? If you said dirt, you are right. And I got a whole bunch of it that we're gonna use to set up our process. While I'm doing this, I want you to know that by performing experiments, science scientists seek answers to the questions that they pose. And when science seek, scientists seek answers to the questions that they pose, then they can come for, for, cut, draw the conclusions that they need to then decide what the next step is for their experiments or for their research. Hmm, why do plants, what do plants need to grow? What do plants need to grow? I know some of us have really strong opinions about what, this, what the right way is. But I, I'm telling you, we don't know until we know, which is why we have to do the experiment. And we're gonna do this experiment together. Because why not? Putting my dirt in all my pots, making sure that I keep my station as clean. Oh. Making sure I keep my station as clean as possible. Because I don't want to have to clean up a big mess afterwards. That's not that's not fun. Great. So we have dirt in all of our pots now. They look great. What do you think? Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. So let's see. Hmm. Scientists only test one thing at a time, which is why I have to think specifically about how I want to set this up. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to have the same thing or multiple things going on, and I don't know what it is. So the thing I'm just going to focus on is what do plants need to grow? I'm not going to try to see how tall they grow, or I'm not going to try to combine seeds to see if they grow something weird or funky. What I'm going to see is what do they need to grow. So I want to set them up a few ways. And I think we should have a chart for this. So give me one second and I'll be back with a chart. All right, all right. While Mr. Frills goes to get the chart ready for us, we're going to spend some time with Lizzo, our bearded dragon. Everybody say, hey, Lizzo. Everybody say, hey, Lizzo. You got to say it louder than that so she can hear you. You got to say, hey, Lizzo. Lizzo is a bearded dragon who lives in my basement. I'm going to give Lizzo a few things. The first thing she needs is light. The next thing she needs is water. 
and then some food. So let's start with the water. Lizzo eats, if you didn't know, roaches. Little bitty roaches. Let's see. She's ready for the roaches. This one has a hard time finding them unless they're moving. But once she finds them, she is good to go. She sees it. Oh, there she goes. Oh, this one, you missed it. You got away. It's the one that got away, Lizzo. All right, I think it's time to say goodbye to Lizzo. We'll leave her to a little bedtime, put her nightlight on, put her head out. Everybody say bye, Lizzo. Bye, Lizzo. Perfect. Got it. I was worried for a second there. But now that we have the charge, I first want to give you a chance to pick your hypothesis. We already know Mr. Frills is. So what I've done is I've written down everything that you could say, and we're going to choose what we think our hypothesis is. We already know mine. Let's see what yours could be. I'll read it for you. It says, I think plants will grow with water and sunlight. That means it'll have water and it'll have sunlight. And you think it'll grow because of that. Think about it, listen closely. I think it'll grow with water and sunlight. What do you think? The next one says, I think plants will grow without water and without sunlight, neither one. No water, no sunlight. What do you think? Yes or no, you think it will grow? Let's see. I think plants will grow with water and without sunlight, meaning it has water, but no sunlight. It has water, but no sunlight. The last one says, I think plants will grow without water and with sunlight. No water, but it has sunlight. What do you think? I'm going to put my, uh, my guess down. My guess was that it will grow it, it will grow and it doesn't need either one and that would be this one I said yes oh I think also that it'll grow if it has water and no sunlight because it doesn't need sunlight and I don't think it'll grow with these those are my guesses so now that we know my guesses and you've made yours and have them in your head of what you think would be the strongest or the, uh, the plant that'll grow now we're gonna actually put it together. So let's see. The first thing I'm gonna have is my deal pickle. No, I'm sorry, my deal seeds. My deal seeds are gonna be they're gonna be four of them that have it. So let's see. Let's get my seeds out. Deal. Deal. Deal and deal. They're all planted. Now let's see. The thing you should know is that when you're doing your, your projects and your investigations, you have to keep track of what, you're, what you have. Because it gets really hard to know 
what you've set it up to be. So I've done this. Here are my, here's my deal side, and here's my Marigold side. And for my deal, deal side, I want to make sure that I know what my options are. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to have all my deal be clearly labeled. So the first one is going to be deal, and we're going to have water and sun. And sun. For my second one, we're going to have water and no sun. My next one, we're going to have water. Sorry, we're going to have sun and no water. So I'm going to say no water. And sun. And then next, my last one for my deal is that I'm going to have no water and no sun. No water and no sun. And now I have to take these numbers and I have to put them on my pots just to make sure that they match up. So this is one, see my one? And it matches the one up here. Two, three, four. And these are all my deals. So now all of my deal seeds are labeled. Now I just have to set them up the way that I said. And I'll do the same thing in my marigold. So I'd have put water in the first two. Take my water bottle, number one, check to make sure it's number one, just so I don't make any mistakes. Number one, spray. One, two, three, four, five. I want to make sure I give them all the same amount of water so that that doesn't become a factor. One, two, three, four, five. And don't put water in this one. Just making sure you're paying attention. And don't put water in this one. Now let's do the same thing for our marigold. We're going to label them to make sure that we get it right. Because we don't want to have any mistakes with setting it up. Because that could impact our, our conclusions that we, that we come up with. All right, marigold. We're going to do the same thing. One is going to be water and sun. Two is going to be water and no sun. Three is going to be no water and sun. And then the last one is going to be no water and no sun. You got it. No water. And I just take my labels, just like I did over there, and I put them on here. So one, and you'll notice that I'm able to tell my ones and my two ones apart because one is blue and the other one's brown. And when I look at this, I've labeled them like that, so I know that my marigold is brown. I'll keep going. Two. Got my two. Three, got my three, four, got my four. Now, what I'm going to do is put my seeds, my marigold seeds, in there. Now, with my marigold seeds, it's just like my deal seeds. I'm going to make sure that I'm kind of putting the same amount and that when I put the water in, I'm not doing anything more. I'm trying to put the same amount of water. So, marigold. There. Marigold here. And marigold here. Perfect. Put them in there a little bit. Now let's see. One and two should have water because that's what it says there. So I take my water. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. 
Nope. Just check in and make sure you're paying attention. Because you can't do that. You can't have a mistake in the setup because it'll impact our conclusions. So now we're thinking about it. What do plants need to grow? What do they need? And we'll find out. How to put some of these in the sun, some of these in no sun, some of these with water, some of these with no water, some of these with no water and no sun, and some of these with water and sun. It's a good combination. We have it all listed out for us here so we can keep track of it throughout our time of exploring it. So now I want you to know that scientists have made the, the process that we follow is that we find our question, we make our hypothesis, and then we set up our investigation to figure it out. We would need to wait until the seeds germinate. And germinate means when the seed actually starts to root and starts to grow. We need to wait until the seeds germinate and begin to grow before we can collect any data. And we'll, we'll collect the data as we go. However, how do you think we should keep track of what's going on with our plants? What do scientists do? How do we keep track of that? Hmm. Should we measure how tall it grows? Should we just take pictures of it and see which one looks like it's growing the fastest? What should we do? There's so much to think about and decisions that need to be made because we're scientists and we can do this. How do you think we should measure it? I've seen a lot of people do a few things. I've seen people measure with a ruler to see how tall it's growing. I've seen people just take pictures and compare the pictures to see if there's more green or more of the plant than the other. What else do you think we could do? Some people sometimes look for more green or more yellow or more brown. Some people just eyeball it and say, does it look healthy? Hmm, looks healthy, let's keep going. Those are things we could be thinking about as we go. I can't wait to see what comes of the ones that we have here. And we're gonna keep trying to check in on them to make sure that we keep track of them. Like, I'm excited, you should be too. So before we continue to make, to make draw our conclusions and jump in here, I actually want us to pause. Everybody say pause. With our pause, what I want us to do for a second is to stand up just like this. When we stand up, I want us to take a moment to stretch our bodies because we've been sitting down for a second and we want to wave our hands from side to side. We want to bend over, stretch out our back. We want to roll our shoulders a little bit. Make sure we're up and ready to move. We're gonna do a little twist here. And then what I want you to do is I want you to try, since we're talking about plants, I want you to try this thing called the tree pose. The tree pose, are you listening? The tree pose means that you stand on one foot. Stand on one foot. This is me on one foot. Mr. Frills on one foot. And you hold your balance. You put your hands in front of you like this. You gotta balance to make sure you're on one foot. Mr. Frill's still on one foot. Hold it as long as you can. And let's see if you can do it. If you've held it this long, you are amazing. And if you didn't, you can just keep trying later. But I wanted us to get up and just shake it out a little bit so you can get back to the work that we're doing now. So, we have our stuff in front of us. We have all of our materials, we have it set. We've made our, our hypotheses, which are here. We've made our hypotheses, and then we've set up our experiment with our investigation. Now all we have to do is observe and take notes and keep track of what we have. Here's what I want you to know. Did you know that scientists are the st that study plants? Did you know that there are some of them that do that? These scientists are called botanists. Every, well, there's one very influential botanist. His name was George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was also from Missouri. Did you know that? I didn't know that until I had to look it up. Who knew he's from Missouri? He, was, he also taught to help, um, his foster mom taught him to, to, to garden and to help in the kitchen. Um, she made simple herbal medicines. She was using the plants that she grew. George became fascinated by plants and was soon experimenting with natural pesticides, fungicides, and soil conditioners. Local farmers began to call George the plant doctor. 
That's an interesting nickname. As he was able to tell them how to improve the health of their garden plants. George Washington Carver used his knowledge to help poor farmers of the rural South and now well known for his work in growing and using peanuts to make hundreds of useful products, including milk, cheese, soap, and grease, and of course, peanut butter. He also made products from sweet potatoes. He used science investigations to help, to help him do his work, just like we did today. So I wanted to make sure you knew that information because George Washington Carver was very helpful and influential and a very great botanist that, you, that we use his studies even today. So now let's go over what we learned for today. Today we learned that scientists notice and wonder and they, they use questions to come up with to come up to come up with to figure out what they what they might notice and what might be happening. We learned that there's ways to answer questions through scientific investigations where we set them up and we actually ask them after we've asked that question. We've learned that we 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 pose our hypothesis, the thing that we think is going to happen, and then we carry out our investigation. We know that scientists do this all the time. And in today's investigation, we learned that plants get no water. They they we, they probably cannot germinate. So we'll see as we find out. And when they get sun, they probably, and when they don't get sun, they probably can't be healthy. But who knows? We'll find out. We'll see next week when we, when we connect to, to see where our plants are. So I'm going to keep them in the sun, keep them in the water, or keep them out of the sun, keep them out of the water. I'll let you know. I hope that you enjoyed today's lessons today. So thank you scientists for being with me and I look forward to seeing you next week. Can't wait. Bye. is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.